Hi, it's Jesse with Outside Science Inside Parks. At night, all types of bats come out of these canyon walls. In this episode, we go to Glen Canyon to follow some NPS scientists who keep an eye on the health of these nighttime flyers. Looks like a canyon bat. See how dark his Belly. wings are and his face is? Being in nature allows you to be a kid again. I'd rather be outside and playing. It's a perfect field for kids. <laughs> we should look at that. It's very handsome. I was scared of bats when I was small. My grandmother and my mom, they would tell me, like yell at me in Navajo, like, ah, Anna, ah, quite you know, and come inside. You know, there's stuff outside there and get your ears, you know. Look, she's cursing at all of us. Mm -hmm. You, 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 and you, and you. I really wanted to study bats because they always seemed like, um, like they were misunderstood. For me, handling the bat, I was just so scared because I thought, you know, it's gonna bite me, and I'm gonna get rabies, it's a vampire bat, but that's all the scary stereotype that everybody has of bats, and for me, I had that, but now, you know, they're just cute puppies with wings. <laughs> they're adorable, yeah. He looks so cool with his <laughs> afro hair, too. Yeah, I'll push it back for you. So we have, uh, three different ways we gather data on bats. We have the uh, bat recorders that we sit out there overnight and just it, they just continuously record the bat calls. Um, we have the mobile transect where we're actually moving with these recorders so that we don't get re repeat calls. And then we have physical capture. Tonight we're going to be uh, mist netting along the Priya River. And uh, mist netting is a, a common way to capture live bats. And so we have a number of nets set up over this waterway. Uh, when bats come out of their roost, one of the first things they want to do is go get something to drink and something to eat. And so typically when you're mist netting bats, you set up your, your nets over slow moving water or pools of water. And so that's what we've done here. It's a good idea, um, not only to do the physical capture, but the acoustic data that we also do. It's good to mix and match the types of research that you do because there's some species that don't get picked up on the acoustic recorders that we can physically catch and there's some species that are we physically catch obviously that don't get picked up on the recorder so it's really good to do both to make sure you get the most count of species accounts that you can within your research. You are 5.9 Missy. Woo! You are healthy. You know I'm gonna catch them, identify and Hope you get something really cool, you know, it'd be like a trading card game, like Pokemon. I was into that when I was younger. You know, get the new species in that net, you know, and just see what we get. Then we measure the forearm, which is where the elbow is, where to his wrist, top. right where that yeah. thumb is poking out. And then we look at the wings. And we give it a score. That I don't see any damage on here, so that score would be a zero. We're trying to get all that information because we want to know how far white nose has spread and which species it's affecting. We care about these species because a lot of them are early indicator species insects. for insect movement, yeah. which can then affect fisheries and then affect us. It's definitely rewarding uh, because you know you're not just you know bettering the future for yourself; you're bettering it for the next generation and beyond. See your take off. This is a cool part. She's not too upset. Ooh, there. Thanks for watching. Check back each month for another episode of Outside Science Inside Parks.